Welcome to Crypto Mastery, week number 42 of 2022. We are going to make crypto easy to understand and simple to invest in today. We're going to look at the news, the overall market, some hot movers in the basket, indicators, and Q&A. I'm Susie, Crypto Girl, and we've got Joe on the line, the creator of the Crypto Mastery Indicators. What is happening with Cardano? ADA today. That's what we're going to go over for the news today. Disclaimer. These are opinions expressed. They're not investment advice. So here's the news. Cardano stablecoin DJED integrated into AXO trading platform. This is on CryptoBasicToday.com. And just to give you a heads up, to foster the utilization of our Cardano's stablecoin DJED across multiple platforms, Cody, a layer one network based on directed acelic graph DAG, has partnered with AXO, a trading protocol. So Cardano stablecoin will be integrated into AXO's digital asset trading platform. The move will enhance the AXO utility offered via a suite of services. AXO is a platform where oriented smart contract variants known as programmable swaps are traded. So I wanted to do a quick deep dive into DeJet. This is a new stablecoin. DeJet is the first stablecoin. This is according to coinmarketcap.com to use formal verification to remove price volatility. It essentially acts as a decentralized bank and uses formal methods that can be verified. It works by keeping a reserve of base coins and mint and burning stable coins and reserve coins. There's a smart contract that maintains the peg to a stable asset like USD by buying and selling stable coins using the reserve and charging fees which accumulate in the reserve. So I wanted to do a deep dive and let's look at Cardano's USD one week chart with the crypto mastery indicators. So here's the history. Cardano is currently down 79% in the last 329 days. So I'm excited about this because it means we're getting Cardano on super sale if we decide to do a long-term investment, not financial advice at all. But I wanted to draw your attention down to the volatility index. It's at a 1.1. I don't know if you can get lower than that. <laughs> that is incredible. So if this is a big turning point for Cardano, this is something that we probably want to pay attention to. So I did a little bit more deep diving for all of us. Um, as far as the other indicators go, the trend strength indicator, the TSI, that is still triggering that is going down. But the signal line, it was moving up a little bit on a sideways movement, but you could see that the green and the gold line are condensing so it could switch again and the trend indicator is still going down now you have three radars to the right that's showing you the one minute three minute five minute 30 minute so at the time of publishing this this morning it was up for the one minute three minute and five minute averages but down for the 30 minute one hour four hour averages up for the day down for the week and up for the two days and down for the five days down for the eight days and down for the one month all right, so it's not a super, super turning point at this point. So I would say all eyes on deck and keep an eye out on Cardano because things are going on in the background and there's where we're going to deep dive. But before I show you the next slides, we need to make sure that everybody understands what a decentralized exchange is. A decentralized exchange is a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace. This is where transactions occur between crypto traders. Decentralized exchanges support financial transactions that are not managed by banks, brokers, or other go-betweens. Mule, Mule Swap is a decentralized exchange that Cardano has given large discounts to for the DJED, which is the Cardano stablecoin users. So we're going to zone in on this Muesli Swap. So Cardano, this is actually in the news today, Cardano DEX sees 788% growth in user activity post Vasile details. The Vasile update, so the Vasile update is a Cardano update that just happened and it was triggered on the Cardano mainnet on September 22nd, this is 2022, while full capabilities were deployed on September 27th, 2022. The impact of the Vasile update is seen as Cardano dApps, that's decentralized apps, 
record significant increases in user activity with Cardano DX, that means decentralized exchange, Musil swap, demonstrating 788% growth in the last 30 days. So Musil swap, which describes itself as the first decentralized exchange for Cardano, and Milko Meta, and the first hybrid DEX decentralized exchange on Cardano launched its Plutus V2 contracts and liquidity pools on October 5th. So there's a lot of behind the scenes activity going on. And these are, I would call these obscure swapping decentralized exchanges that you're not going to put your attention on immediately. And if you've never heard of it, you won't be noticing these growth patterns. So if we want to zone in on these growth patterns before the mainstream understands them, this is where I think that you could actually gain a little bit of advantage with fundamental information. So Muesli Swap, Vasio provided significant benefits in drastically reducing transaction size and market operation fees. So that is a very important statement. So when you want to draw attention or get people to use your product, you do discounts, coupons, what do the grocery stores do? Buy one, get one free. So this is causing that 708, potentially causing that 788% increase in the use case of their stablecoin. The Cardano DEX, that's a decentralized exchange, reported an almost 91% slash in transaction size from 14.3 KB to 1.31 KB, and also a nearly 50% decrease in fees from 1.44 Cardano to 0.73 Cardano when comparing Plutus V1 and V2. So that is your, de your big decrease in cost of doing business with the Cardano and the stablecoin. So just keep an eye out for that. I don't know how long those discounts will continue to go on, but that is something that it looks like Cardano team is doing on the back end to actually get Cardano's use case scenario up. So now let's look at the overall market. We're going to look at Bitcoin and Ethereum. There has been a $60 billion fluctuation in three days into the overall market cap. So currently today, we're at $927 billion. So last week when we did this, since then, we've jumped $30 billion, $60 billion in fluctuation. So you could see on a little bit, uh, October 13th, about 12 o'clock, we were down to 880 billion. And then it went up to 940 billion and back down to that 880 billion. And now we went back up to 940 billion and now we're in between 920 and 940 billion. So there is a lot of activity. That's a pretty large sum of, sum of money that is fluctuating we still are not back to one trillion, but things are moving. Here's the one week market performance in market cap block size on Coin360. We call this the heat map. So on a one week, which is a seven day performance, Bitcoin has only fluctuated 0.9%. I'd say sideways city. Ethereum has only fluctuated up 1.12% at $1,306. We'll go back to Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is still under 20,000 at 19,330. So take note that you have the large boxes, which are representing your market cap size in the stable coins. So USDC, USDT, BUSD, and DAI is a stable coin too. You can notice that Ripple had some movements up. It went up to 49 cents. It went down 5.95%. Cardano is down 9.41%. So the dark greens are going to represent the coins that are actually three steps up. So Quant looks like it's got some good days going. And there is just a few of them. They're actually moving upward right now. The light green represent the first stage up. So you have Leo, Crow, Wrapped Bitcoin, Ethereum, BNB, Binance Coin, and Bitcoin, and XMR, Stellar Lumens, or Monero, um, EOS, HitBTC, and HNT, and BIT. 
All right, so if you're in acquisition mode, you want to zone in on those dark reds to see what is finished falling. So if you're into selling, you want to look at those dark greens. So if you're looking to acquire something, check out the Ripple, Cardano, Stellar Lumen, Soul, ICP, Near, uh, ApeCoin, and Mana, Axis, and GRT. Uh, B TCB and Ethereum W. All right, so those are ones that are super dropped and once they hit that floor, you know what it's gonna do, it's gonna go back up. Unless the, the actual coin or project is over, but we're talking about high market cap coins. So where there's so much money that they really should never falter. All right, so we're gonna use CryptoMastery.online indicators. To, sus to subscribe, just use the above URL and you can get a deep dive into how to use these indicators. So we have Bitcoin USD one week performance chart with the Crypto Mastery indicators. The first bundle of indicators you're seeing on the top are what's called the ERI and the ATR. That's early reversal indicator combined with the average true range. And this is a one week performance chart for Bitcoin. So what you're seeing is that the average true range is that dark red line that's been coming down for quite a bit. So it's still in downward movement. And those arrows on the top area are indicating the early reversal indicators. Bitcoin has not had an early reversal indicator in weeks. Let's step down to the next set of indicators. On this second line, you have the trend line and the radar. The trend has triggered a bell, which is a good sign that things may be moving upward. Very exciting. So the bell means ding dong. There's a bell alert. Stay alert because it's about things are about to uh, happen. And actually, actually, I apologize, guys. The key comes in first and then the bell means it's time. All right. So I want you to take note that the 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 tip the indicator below the trend indicator, the TSI, that's trend strength indicator. So notice how the bell came in. Now we have a second alert that is confirming that bell. The trend strength indicator for Bitcoin is green. That green arrow means things are looking up. Now if we go to the next indicator down the signal line. That is remaining green, which means it's going up. And the last indicator on the bottom, the volatility index, you can look on the right hand side and you see gr the red shaded area it says 3.47. That's the volatility index, which means the oversold rate. So that thick red line on the volatility index represents the number 20, and the thin red line is a zero. This is such an exciting place for Bitcoin to be, to be able to acquire it at such a low volatility index. And the reason why I'm so excited about this volatility index is because look how much room there is to grow. Ideally, you purchase in the red zone and you sell in the green zone. Look how much room you have to grow to get to that I have to sell zone. And departing with your assets is a pretty hard thing to do because nobody can see the future and see, you know, how much money you could be taking if you let it sit there for 10 to 20 years down the road. Uh, but if you're a swing trader like I am, you, you've been through a lot of waves and you realize you should have just taken profit. And that is, there's different ways to run your portfolio and I'm not here to tell you what to do but I do want to let you know that this is extremely exciting time if you're in the acquisition mode with that volatility index being that low for so long so right now I would say for Bitcoin today right now on a one-week basis what tells me this is a good thing is that that trend strength indicator has triggered the bell and the trend triggered. The volatility index has a sub extremely substantial low volatility index. You really can't get that lower. I mean, you can go down to zero, but you're really close to the bottom. And if I go back up, take your eyes back up to the early reversal indicator chart and the ATR, those four line, those three blue lines, that's the Keltner band. 
the candlesticks are below the lowest Keltner band. And we can zone in on Bitcoin in a minute on a live chart. That is, again, substantially exciting to see because just like the volatility index, you have only up to go. This is the same thing with these Keltner bands. Typically, the first stop is going to be the first band, and then it's going to test the second band, and then it's going to test the third band. And when it goes above the third band on a one-week basis, that's an alert to say it's you better take profit because it's like a bouncy ball. What goes up goes down. What goes down goes up. At this point, we are so low. <laughs> Like we are so low. So um, I'm just saying this is an exciting point for Bitcoin. And we've got, I would say, four indicators saying up. And the the other one I take take note is the radar. It's the right hand side, it'll say time frame trend. So that stands for 60 is one hour, 240 is four hours, D is one day, and W is one week. So I want you to see that the day is triggered as the average is up for the day. So if that day continues for seven days straight, then at the end of that week, then the week will go up. Of course, Lee, we do want to see more of the one hour and four hours up because that would determine you know, where our day is going to go. So that's something for the intraday trader to definitely keep an eye on. But um, I, I'm excited to see that there's a big potential of Bitcoin moving. Now, once that bell, if the, if the next indicator after that bell is a one and then a two, three, four, five, six, seven, just like happened in September of 2022, uh, well, September 2021, you could see if you look back to that trend, you could see how everything was moving upward and you had green candlesticks all right meaning it's going up and if you look at the past performance of bitcoin when in in the early reversal chart in the upper area you can see that once that green candlestick got above the top keltner band it was time to take profit all right so we're at a super low place great acquisition and um Keep your eyes on Bitcoin and maybe slowly get in. All right, now we have Ethereum USD one week performance chart with the crypto mastery indicators. So very similar to Bitcoin. If you look at the early reversal chart with the three counter bands, same thing. It, Ethereum is sitting that so small and it's been sideways for like five weeks now. You can see that it's sitting right below the lower counter band. So it's as if we only have up to go with Ethereum. And then you have the number two that was just triggered on the trend indicator. Just like Bitcoin, that one day average is moving up. However, the trend strength indicator, the third zone down, has not been triggered as an upward yet. And the signal line is upward, but it is tight. And the volatility index is at a 10.82. So in my opinion, I would say volatility index is great and low. That gets a check for me. The signal line is pretty tight and the trend strength indicator is down. So those two, I would be waiting for that to make a change to go all in. Uh, I do like the point that the trend indicator is triggering a two. But you look at those candlesticks movements, it's very, very slight. So there's not extreme strength backing this move at this point so if i was to get in it would be a very gingerly small movements in because there's two indicators that have not triggered to saying we're ready to go up so we're waiting for the average true range to go up we're waiting for an early reversal arrow to come up too so there's still a lot that's left to to desire in this particular point, especially that trend strength indicator, that would be phenomenal for Ethereum. All right, so in our basket, we have Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polygon, Cardano, Chainlink, Litecoin, Cosmos, Algorand, Harmony, Phantom, and Solana. And most of these can be found on Coinbase. So we're gonna look at the hot movers in the basket. So we are used TradingView, and here's our Crypto Mastery basket in TradingView. 
And you can see that the basket is organized by percentage changed. So out of all of those in the basket, Matic Polygon went up 0.78% in the most recent time frame. So I pulled up that Polygon chart so you could see it. It looks like the early reversal came in three weeks ago, and then it's been in an upward swing on the trend. But the TSI, it looks like it went up to that top zone on the trend strength indicator, and then now it's going down a little bit. And then the signal line is still moving up, but it's getting tight. Do you notice that that volatility index is at a 19.56? So it is still below the 20 line, which is oversold zone. And then you can see that Atom, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, Cardano, Phantom, Solana, Harmony, Link, and Algo are losing value as we speak. So that is good for someone that is in the acquisition mode. So you want to keep watching those until they get to the floor. So now we're going to look at the crypto screener review. So this is organized by Coinbase. And then that is the filter, only Coinbase coins. And this is on tradingview.com. And the percentage change I clicked because I want to see what was up for the one week. You can notice that on the upper center area, title area, it says 1W. That stands for one week. So Anchor USD on Coinbase went up 18% in the last seven days. So let's zone in on Acre when we look at that live chart. And then Synapse went up 13.99%. Ocean Protocol went up 13% in the last week. Double O Token went up 13%. Polymath Network went up 12%. And Original Trail went up 11%. So those are the top I would say earners on Coinbase, so we can definitely look into those. So we're going to review the indicators now with CryptoMastery.online. You can go to that URL and subscribe. And on that members area, to be a, a, a member of the members area, you're going to get a deep dive understanding on how to use the indicators and access to a lot of very helpful crypto knowledge. So now we're going to do question and answer, and we'll jump in to the live charts. And Joe is here with us so that we can go over the market live and find those hot coins to either sell or the hot coins to buy. So welcome, Joe, and everybody. This is the time where if you want to ask questions, please bring them on. Hi, Susie. How's it going? Great. Great. Hi, everyone. Thanks. Okay. Hello, Joe. Um, so, you know okay. No, go ahead. I wanted. I wanted to uh, tell us what you've got going on. Uh well, I mean, first I, I wanted to. Um, it was some interesting news that you just discussed on the Matic. So I thought maybe that'd be a good place to start and see what that looks like on the chart. Oh, all right, absolutely. The the Matic one, okay. So or Cardano. Well, let's take a look at Matic first here. Okay. Okay, and if you um, tighten the chart up a little bit here. So uh, what we got here the other day was uh, a ERI uh, reversal. And if you put the vertical line right on the ERI, you'll notice that the TSI is not set up. So this is something of interest to me because if the TSI does turn and we get our green dot, well, then that could mark this next leg up, which would be to a new high. So um, that's one of the things we were waiting for. So um, what we want to do, Susie, is we want to put a check for the volatility index because we have that. That's down at the 20. All right, one sec. I'm so sorry. I was just going to set an, an alert for this. Okay, so you want to check on the early reversal? Is that what you were saying? Uh, 
uh, on the volatility index it's down at the 20. Okay. there's more than one check on there right right maybe i'll put a note on there for everybody so they know that volatility is under 20. All right. And then what about, so I'll just put in a little note under TSI and just say that we're waiting for the TSI to trigger. Yes. To confirm. Oh. Oops, you're on the wrong spot. Yeah. Right, waiting for TSI to confirm trend. If your charts ever do that, guys, I'm gonna you could just click on oh, I want to move it down. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. All right, so we're waiting for TSI to confirm the trend. All right, what else do you want me to do, Joe? Yes. Uh, no, that's it. Uh, we need one more check on the signal line. It's still green and crossing and going up. All right, so we have, let me put numbers here. Well, I guess we don't. All right, so one, two, three, four. And, and we also have, to remember guys, we have the, the radar saying we're up for the hour, we're up for the day. So I, I could say that the the radar is is up for the day at least. Well, it didn't stick. All right, there we go. All right. Anybody have any questions about that? All right. No. Um, I was just looking in here and I found a really good one here. This one is uh, ANK. Anchor. Yeah, that showed up on that screener review. Yeah. So what's interesting about this is this is a weekly. Let's go to the daily a second. So... What's interesting here is we got uh, a break of the uh, ATR today. And uh, if you look yesterday, right when we got the ERI, it looks like we got our first green dot on the TSI. So if you put your cursor there, Susie, that's uh, one of the setups that we've been talking about over the last 30 days. Right here, TSI. We have yeah. everything. Everything is beautiful on this chart. Yeah. So right now, this looks like one of the best coins uh, that may be starting to trend up higher here on the Coinbase because we also have the daily, which is showing the ERI. I mean, the weekly. So in this case point, we actually have a weekly and a daily ERI, and we'll see if this market follows through. Yeah, so there's a star right there, like that weekly. Yeah, that's a, that's a beautiful thing. So that, I'm going to just show everybody where I was able to find that. You Earlier you saw the screenshot of the screener. So I went in and I filtered by Coinbase. And then I did one week, and then I did percentage change. So we have anchor right here so this is like a, a discovery zone that you could do and it it's for the one week it's up 18.77 percent and then we should look at this one joe o r c a 
And then to do that, guys, watch this. You just shrink this down. Whoops, let me go back into it. So there we go. We have a split screen, and now we can just click there. And whoa, look at that. Wow. So then I can I can shrink the screener down. That's some big move. If you were um, able to jump in and get this coin, we should put this on our watch list. Let's see if we could do just uh, Coinbase watch list. I believe this is a new coin. O R V A. Yep, it's a it's a new coin just accepted on Coinbase. So then you could click right here and you could get a little information on it. If you're just technically trading, then you want to look at the charts, but if you're wanting to hold it long term, then you could go into more of a fundamental. So you have the technicals are saying strong buy, and then you could get a little bit more information on it. And overview, here's news. All right. Thanks, Joe. I just wanted to show them a little that a little bit. And yeah, I mean, look, that's a... Uh... Okay, keep going. Well, no, yeah, I, I definitely want you to deep dive in this. So, guys, this is a Coinbase watch list, and I haven't organized it, and we could definitely do it if we have time today, but up for the month, up for the day and the week, and then the combo. So, it, I just, I haven't personally organized it. Sometimes it's good to do it live. But the percentage change will kind of show you what's moving. So we have Anchor up 14.99%, XYO at 5.58. So if you've done it, and then down here we have that Anchor 15% and like this ORC. Okay, so I'll close this and let's let's study ORC. Orca. So uh, well, this is I a mean, one. Okay, keep going. Well, I just want to take note that this is a one day chart, but I'm going to pull up one week, but there's a good chance that it's not going to have much data. Yes, yeah, what I thought. Because it's new on Coinbase. So you could see that we April of 2022, it may have just started collecting data. And then the indicators, the null proprietary indicators, are going to take time to collect data because they're doing math and if there's no math to pull from then there's no math to make good sound decisions on so you would not be able to use i mean a one week it's happening joe i mean this is incredible that your indicators are working with such little math to go by but it's also very soothing to know that volatility index is not working because guys this is where you need to risk manage yourself if the indicators are not picking up data on this, then there there is a high risk factor. And, and Joe, would you back me on that, or do you think that that's a safe scenario? That if there's no indicator, it means there's not enough data. So, would analysts in major hedge funds be buying this with other people's money? I would say no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, you have to have enough data, you know. Um, depending on which time frame that you're utilizing, you know. So, you know, in this case point, the weekly does does not have enough. So, if you were going to trade it, you would have to go to let's say the shorter time frame below that, which would be the daily. I'm gonna say. Data matters when risk when you're doing risk assessment. When I don't know. When when data I'm just gonna say data matters. You guys know what that means. Data matters. And so when you don't have a lot of data, then I wouldn't bet the house on this you know what i mean like yeah it's going up it's super exciting but most stock hedge funds are not going to touch this because of the lack of data on coinbase now there could be more data on another exchange where it has had more time on it 
which brings me to another conclusion, guys, is as these assets have developed more of a history and a performance, a trackable performance, you will see, I, I, I highly think that the assets will become more valuable just from having more of a trackable existence. And um, I think there's a reason why Fortune 500 stocks are are stable because they've been around a long time. They've stood the test of time. So it's my little input. All right. So Joe, what do you, how would you feel about this on a risk assessment on one to ten? Um, would you go long term, short term, or would you just step aside and let this one go by? Uh, well, I, I probably most likely step aside right now because if you look at how much of a price movement that's been today, that's a little bit too too much for me. I mean, I would have loved to have been in it um, at the other ERI print and been holding. Yeah. I mean, because you never know when the market is going to uh, unfold itself. Um, but that's uh, that's an exuberant price move. Um, I mean, how much percent is that? 29%. I feel like I'm on the free fall at Six Flags, waiting where I, like, I went all the way to the top and I'm just waiting for it to drop. <laughs> if you like roller coasters, you like to watch your money drop, then I'd say, yeah, jump in. But at this point, uh, like you said, like if you got in in that first ERI, this is a great example as to why you should follow the indicators. And when you see that ERI, you jump on it. So in 14 days, that thing skyrocketed, but this would be the time to take profit often. So that, so if somebody did jump in on that, hopefully they're hearing us and they say, "Hey, Orca, time to time to sell." <laughs> yeah, I All mean, right. if you well, look thanks, back in good. here, if you make the chart a little bit tighter, and if you look back in here to where the uh, old highs may have been. I mean, it seems like it has been consolidating right for a while. Yeah. Yeah. So, so most likely that old high looks like it was in August. Yeah. So yeah, I'll say before we, we jump off of that, I would say there's still more, more room to go for anyone that's in there that it may be going for that old high in August to to take that out. Let, let's see if we, away. wow, but let's, I, if we can sell it, wait, I guess there is some data in here. Let's just jump right into this one. Wow. So there was way more highs. So this has been in existence. Wow. You see those there? This was, let's just see where this, if I can get one of them. Okay, right here. 50% in 173 days. So, well, there is still, I, I see what you're saying. There is still time. It is, it is alive. I do like the, that it's moving a lot. Um, so, you know, if you go to, to take a look at another market here, uh, just because I'm looking for setups right now. And if you go to the uh, CECGLD, Right. Uh, G, C, G, C, G. C, Golds. okay. Right. Uh, yeah, G. Oh, C, is that, okay, sorry. Oh my gosh, C, Gold, Susie. <laughs> Sell low. Right there. All right. Okay, and if you make that to a daily and uh, just make the chart, the chart a little bit tighter. So it's on the daily. And I think you have to reset your chart on the screen. All right, we have to go back into this one. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, it looks like we were doing some analysis on this earlier. We we're probably looking at this last week. Yeah. So we got the ERI print and most likely we were waiting for the TSI. And right now we got the first green dot on the TSI. 
and we're waiting for the bell alert now. So what we want to do, Susie, is put what we're waiting for uh, the bell alert. And then we do have a check mark. Oops. We're gonna, I'm gonna just do a check mark, guys, so that we have the trend strength indicator is in. The signal line is tight, but it's here. And we're in what we call at the cake bake zone, but it's still low enough. So I mean, how do you feel? I say volatility index would be okay, even though it is at a 33.46, but it's it's still low. We still have a long room to grow. What would you say about the volatility index? How would you express this? Yeah, well, I mean, right now, you set your alert for the, uh, the volatility index right now is in the middle of the zone. But what you're really looking for is for the trend alert to show the bell. When you get the bell alert, that's the final confirmation. That may be just enough to give what, give what we're looking for for the market to rally and change direction and go higher. Because right now, that bell alert has, an, has not printed. You want to set our, set our alert? Beautiful. Now, um, here's another market which. Go ahead. go ahead. All right. Another one which is uh, CRO. I noticed that cry was looking good. Right. And um, if you make the chart a little bit tighter, all right, there you go. <clears throat> so we just got the bell alert today, right? And um, first we had the ER, the ERI print. This was the other day, uh, two days ago. And if you look at that, Susie, and put a vertical line, Again, it's, it's so along the lines of the setups that we've been reviewing over the last 30 days. Yeah, but I mean, everything is aligned for, for Cello. Well, if you put it, if you move that uh, vertical line to the left, as you look at the ERI. You mean like this? Okay. Like that? Yes. We're mainly looking at when the ERI shows we're looking at what happens with the TSI, okay? Because when we get the ERI print, the question becomes, does, does the market have momentum? And the TSI shows that when we do get our green dot. So that's generally with the setup, the beginning of the setup. It's when you get the ERI print and you get the TSI at the same time. And in this case, you actually had the volatility index at that point, which was down there at the 20 as well. So, you know, um, once you get the trade set up, yeah. as the trade progresses, the final confirmation of the trend to change the trend direction is the bell alert. So right now we finally got our confirmation and uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens here over the next week to see if we do see the follow through and see the number sequence start. Yeah, it went up 8% in the last four days since the, the ERI trigger. And we still have room to grow. So I'm just gonna zone in on, on this. So if it goes up to, well guys, I, I I think I sold my crow when it was at fifty nine cents. So I I'm amazed. <laughs> this last year has been just like this 
absolutely stunning scenario of how low it can go. And I feel like just emphasizes the importance of swing trading more than ever. So having it, owning it at 59 cents and selling it and, and waiting to get back in, like, wow. So it may hit 11 cents and we're currently at 11, 11, zero five. So it, it's not targeted to go extreme amount, but if we tighten this chart just to see like where things were, you guys, if you're new into crypto, I want you to kind of see a little bit of the history of the all time highs. Was that 98%? And that was back on November 24th, 2021. So as far as the all time high goes, you have, and honestly, it could have been higher than this. It's just that this is just showing the data on Coinbase. So if you were to go on other places that Crow was there, crypto.com, it's called Crow, a longer time period, you may have seen it gone higher. In my mind, I keep thinking $1.29. So, Joe, you know, I just feel like with institutions getting into this market, the world hasn't even gotten into crypto yet. So we could definitely see some higher highs in the long, long-term hold. All right, thanks for that one. I'm definitely into Crow. All right, do we have anything else? <laughs> 13 more minutes to go. Sure, I do, right? All right, and uh, this is, uh, um, second. We had an ERI print yesterday on Sol, S-O-L. Solana. And when we got that ERI print, we also had the green dot on the TSI. So let's look at what we have and what we're waiting for. Let me just delete so the what we have is we have the volatility index down to 20, so that gets a check. Okay, so yes, absolutely, so exciting. All right, we have the TSI, Trend Strength Indicator, that followed suit just with that early reversal. This is exciting, I think it's, it's like the sprinkle the the you right before it starts to rain you know how it starts to sprinkle this is what i feel like it's about to happen <laughs> it's sprinkling in solana land and in crypto you have some sprinkling of upswings before they all follow suit remember how earlier this year it was just like up 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 and you're like you just don't know what to buy because you would want to spread yourself so thin feels like they're slowly coming yeah. back to life well, you know, I, I would describe this one here is, uh, you know, this is a diamond in the making right here. Um, because basically, when you start to have the, uh, the, the first clues that show, like the ERI and the TSI, the volatility index, you know, when you're in anticipation for that final extra confirmation, this allows you to scale into your positions. So, you know, you can always come in here and put 25 on the volatility index, another 25 on the TSI, uh, 25 on the ERI. And then now you're waiting for the signal line and you're waiting for the trend. So you scale into your positions accordingly. Beautiful. And the other thing is, is the average true range up here, guys. So it did trigger back here and then it stopped. So it would be amazing if we passed through this top band, $34, then it could trigger the early reversal. Notice what happened before is see that price at $37.40 when the price exceeded that 
band right here, it triggered the entry. So we would need the new low is 3465. And then that would trigger the entry for the average true range. So I could we could also potentially say we're waiting on the average true range too for the ultimate. I mean, we have a lot of indicators on here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> <laughs> seven analysis systems moving at the same time. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate your creation. It's made my life so much more peaceful in the trading realm, and I feel more extremely confident about my moves. And uh, what the best thing is, is if I don't take profit on one of the red arrows, it's my fault because I didn't listen to the technology, in my opinion. You know, so. All right, before we end and keep everybody on schedule for today, is there any other secret gem you want to reveal to us today, Joe? <laughs> well, I mean, I was just going to just uh, close out on the Ethereum. Okay, yeah, I, th I think it's a good choice. It was beautiful looking at that this morning. All right, I'm going to darken the early and reversal. You know, just um, I just wanted to talk about what we need to have and for the market to be back bullish. And that would be for the market price to break the ATR. So that ATR has been in a down cycle since the beginning of September. Or, yeah, about, looks like about the, the 13th, it started going down. And it's, uh, it's still 30 days in there. So it's still maybe just too early for it to break that ATR. We won't know coming up um now the, the one let's talk about what we do have right what we do have is is that we got the volatility index so we have a check so we have the signal line so we have another check right and we have the tsi and we have the trend indicator All right. Nice. Now, um, okay. All right. So this is uh, well, one of the case it. points. Right. This is one. This is one of the case points. Whereas is that everything is aligned with this. But let's just say what could go wrong. Okay. Because you know, there's always that one percent in every trade that you do. Because nothing's 100% in this business. Well, what we need to be cautious of, and this is where you can set your alert, Susie, is for that TSI. Okay? If the TSI gives another red dot, right, you need to be cautious in your, on your expectation of this market because it may just stay and consolidate within this trading range. So it doesn't mean that it has to go back down lower. Um, it just may stay right here. But um, right now, everything does look bullish on the chart. Uh, so we have to see how things progress over the next couple of days. But if things were to fail, um, set your alert for the TSI. And if your red dot shows on the TSI, then you can um, watch and see what happens. You know, because it may just go to back down to the lower end of the trading range. And for anyone that's building um, positions, right, um, this might be the, the, the final base before it actually goes up. You know, yeah. I'm just going to take note in the past, just because if we look at the past performance, there was not many times that it, the TSI triggered in the last year and it only went up three. Look, this one was one time it went up two. But other than that, when Ethereum does move upward, it continues like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13. This one, I mean, even though we had some weeks where it didn't trigger, but it still went up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12. So 
if that follows suit, you probably have a good amount of weeks for that upward momentum to continue. And by all means, we have a long way to grow. And you have those Keltner bands. The next move would be, I was trying to, to make this orange match the average true range. So the way you have your data set up, if it goes above this line, is that what's going to trigger the average true range? Well, we need a closing price above that line. And and if we do get above that, that would be like the official change in cycle. You know, and you can see in here in September, it challenged it. There was a challenge of the ATR and she failed. So, um, yeah. you know, it'll be interesting to see. Before we, we usually can get to that ATR, it usually has to test the upper end of that culture band. And you can see it right now it's right at the band. So. Yeah. But as it yeah, is right it's now, it, it, it looks yeah. bullish. Right. And I hope it goes up because I'm holding a third. <laughs> yeah, it's got to go up a lot. <laughs> I don't know when you started holding it. Yeah, you may be down cost average that, right? That's what I, I've, I've, I have to down cost average a lot of my long terms, and I've been waiting to figure out, well, when is it, what is the floor? So uh, Susie's going to be busy at the computer, ding, 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 you know, buying little accurate, like little amounts of uh, star dustings just to, to pack in the uh, quantities of coins that I'll have for more of a long term hold for the, the ones that I do believe are like infrastructure long term. So, uh, you know, the reason why I wanted to deep dive in Cardano today, and I'll close with this and go back to the news today, is just because there's been a lot of very intellectual people very bullish on Cardano that have deep dived into the technicals and the use case scenarios. And so I thought I should deep dive into that decentralized exchange, even though that was a very obscure exchange. And I wanted you guys to know the way that that one of these coins like Cardano will get the utilization up is by doing discounts, just like a new brand's going to, you know, have a series of coupons going out to all the moms and, and the schools and so forth to, to buy something. Um, try this new Crest mouthwash, right? Because that way they're going to get a use case scenario and people are going to have it more of like a household name. So I think that's what Cardano is doing and, and that's their marketing approach. And I think that it's working with 788% increase in usage of that particular coin is a good stat. So um, I would just say I don't trade by fundamentals, but I am interested because of some coins are and will be a good long term hold. But by all means, I like to take profit. And if these things are not giving you a staking residual fee, then you really need to be on top of them because um, some stocks people can live their entire life off of the dividends but you have to be aware that you know at this point unless you're staking them and it's a stakeable asset you're not going to get the dividends until you sell so <laughs> that's my ending ending talk to everybody today hope you had a good day hope you guys have some safe tradings is there anything you want to say to end it joe uh good luck trading this week and uh let's uh, see how everything works out with this and see if it uh actually test the ATR. Be interesting. Yeah, we're on it. We'll see you next Tuesday. Have a great week, guys.